Namaste. Today I will explain you something about how to write the board paper. Paper pattern for all subjects you know very well, but still I will explain you something about that also. Today whatever I will explain that is all based on my discussions with senior teachers, board examiners, moderators. So just I am sharing what I know and which I got something from them. But definitely I assure you that whatever I will explain you will be benefited. So let us start. You know that your all subjects board papers are of 80 marks and 20 marks are reserved for internal assessments. Means your school will give you on the basis of oral exams or on the basis of your internal submissions, school will give you 20 marks. Out of 20 marks you will get something. You may be knowing that your answer sheet, board answer sheet for mathematics subject is of 45 pages. Normally board expect that additional supplement is not required. You may not need additional supplement. That is why your original answer sheet of mathematics math subject is of 45 pages and for other subjects it is of 32 pages. Your answer sheet is not vertical but it is horizontal. It is of A4 size and your answer sheet contains only 16 lines. Why I am telling you? Because in my future further discussions if I ask you to write answer of any specific question for one full page means my requirement is you must write that answer for at least 16 lines. So because 16 lines is equal to one page. Every, every student's target is to secure 10 CGPA. How that CGPA board calculate? You, do, you need not bother about it. Board will take care of that. But 10 CGPA doesn't mean your score is 100 percent. Your score in actual percentage, percentage wise your score will vary from 91 percent to 96 percent and your 11 standard admission, college admission, junior college admission. For that admission your actual percentage or actual marks will be considered and board inform those marks to you through that mark list. Now today's main chapter, how to write board paper. This is normal saying that uh, board exam is an exam of a technique, but what is that technique? In a simple way that technique means impressing your examiner or moderator, presenting your answers in such a way so that he will be impressed and everywhere if your content is good then everywhere he will give you full marks. But for impressing that examiner or moderator what to do? Understanding that method is a technique of writing board paper and according to me you must follow that technique from today itself because I know that uh, many points which I will explain you will find it very simple and you may think that you will directly do it at the time of board exam but it is not possible. Doing simple thing also needs a practice. So you start that practice from today itself. So start writing your answers as per my method or based on my method 
my explanation from today itself. Margin. In the board exam, don't draw big margins because many students, what they do? From left side and from, from right side, they draw big margin just to show that your answer is big one. You have written many number of lines, but this is not good. This is the proper way of drawing a margin. This is board answer sheet, but as required in the left hand side, you can draw one or two additional margins, margin lines, especially uh, for SST and science, you need two additional margin lines, two additional small margin lines and in that second small margin, you will write point number because uh, in case of SST and science, we normally write all answers in points. So, point number 1, point number 2, point number 3 for writing that point numbers addition margin line is required because examinal, examiner just he observe, if he observe your answer, then at a glance he will come to know how many points you have written and if point number is sufficient, he will get impressed. So, for writing that point number, you need separate margin pen and ink, which pen to be used, any pen, it may be a ball pen, fountain pen, gel pen, but use only black ink or blue ink, not red or green, because those inks are reserved for examiners, moderators. So, you can use only, if you are if your cancellation is less or cancellation or overwriting, scratching is less, then I will suggest you to use black ink. In one page, if your cancellation or overwriting is just one or two times, then your writing is good as per my opinion and in that case, you can use black ink. But if your cancel, if your cancellation is more than two, three, four times or maybe more than that, then do not use black ink, use blue ink. Underlining, if suppose in my further discussions, if I will explain you or I am expecting you to write the answer of that type of question, minimum 10 lines. If suppose you write instead of 10 lines, if you write 8 lines only, okay. But I am not okay if you do not underline important words, keywords or maybe one whole statement which is very important. Because if you think that uh, examiner will read each and every word what you have written. For example, if your answer sheet is of 32 pages and you have written from page number 1 to page number 32. If you feel or if you imagine that uh, examiner will read first word from first word of first page to last word of last page, page number 35 or 32, whatever, then you are in fool's paradise. It is not possible for examiner to read each and every word, but it does not mean that without reading, he gives you marks. Normally, 10 standard examiner, he is experienced person and if he just go through that answer, normally his vision, he collects the important words which are covered in your, the whole answer and 
he comes to know yes he has written all points he has explained well and on that basis he will give you full marks but for giving those marks it is not necessary for him to read each and every word but if suppose examiner his vision or his eyes don't catch uh, some important words then who will be in a loss you he may give you out of 3 only 2 marks or 2 and 1/2 marks because he may be under impression that you have not covered that specific point so in order to avoid such loss you must underline each and every important word not whole statement but important words keywords so that even if examiner will read those keywords he will come to know ki yes he has covered all points and he will give you full marks examiner's work will be easy easier one so uh, underlining is very important point don't copy questions we know some points we know but still we are doing in a wrong way so copying question is not necessary if question number you write there it is sufficient for examiner to understand what you have what which question you have covered this is also very common thing new section or new question on separate page uh, rough work where to do the rough work especially in case of mathematics and science my suggestion is you start doing rough work on the last page of your answer sheet not on the question paper but last page of your answer sheet and not where that no, not where do where you uh, solve the original sum means where you do the fair work don't do rough work there your rough work must be on the last page only cancellation everybody expects that your paper must be very clean there should not be any cancellation or overwriting but it is not possible for everybody one or one two three cancellation on each page is a normal practice of every student but even if you cancel a single word i'm suggesting you to cancel that word by using pencil not by pen if you are writing regular paper by using suppose blue pen and two words which you have written are wrong and you want to cancel those two words then just use pencil and cancel those two words in this way first word second word in this way you cancel those two words but normally what students they are doing they are just rubbing it and uh, they expect that whatever you have written as this is a uh, so those are wrong words examiner he should not come to know or understand what you have written but if once you cancel it then examiner he knows that you have written wrong words or you have used wrong words that is why you have you are you have cancelled those words so even if he will come to know what you have written it won't affect on your marks so my suggestion is cancel those two words by using pencil in this way only normally examiner expects your answer suppose eight lines ten lines normal uh, it is a psychological or practical or experienced expectation of examiner for each type of, uh, for every answer and many times we are if you if you write many words if your lettering is small then you may write more than 10 words in one line in that case your answer will be a small one if i am expecting your answer for 10 lines then your answer may be 
uh, you, uh, you must you may have written each and every point but your answer will be only for only of 6 to 7 lines but what examiner will feel his expectation is of say 10 lines and you have written everything in 6 to 7 lines it creates bad impression so in order to satisfy this examiner's psychological need you must write that answer for 10 lines but for that purpose what to do how to understand the examiner's expectation just do one thing you write only 10 words maybe 10 to 11 words not more than that only 10 to 11 words in one line and start writing 10 to 11 words at home also because practice is required and you will observe that uh, suppose if you go back to home and observe what you have written in your terminal papers or unit test papers then you must have written more than 10, 12, 13, 14 words in one line and by writing such 13, 14 words in one line the length of your answer will be less one or small one so without considering what examiner is expecting you just start writing only maximum 10 to 11 words in one line this will satisfy the examiner's psychological requirement language of answer the language language of answer which you will write in the board exam it must be your own language normally for all subjects there are cert uh, certain exceptions for example if you define something or if you are writing some rules laws principles then that part will be strictly as per in the, uh, as uh, uh, as mentioned in the text means definition or rules laws principles you will write ditto as given in the text but for other all types of questions use your own language not langu language which is used in the digest because examiner is expecting what you understood and he is not expecting or he don't want to judge your learning capacity that is why you must write all types of questions in your own words but in case of politics and economics try to be very specific and everything must be as per uh, the text means you try to use uh, you try to write every answer as given in the text in case of SST or uh, science normally your grammar or spellings are not checked if there is a sp uh, spelling mistake nobody nobody will deduct your mark but if there are so many spelling mistakes or grammatical mistakes it will create bad impression and when your answer is correct and examiner he has a right to give full three marks or not in that case he will not give you full three marks maybe two and half mark why that half mark is deducted or reduced there is no specific reason you have written everything but it is a psychological impact which is created because of your many spelling mistakes or grammatical mistakes the examiner he may deduct your half mark if you ask to any SST or a science teacher that uh, sir or madam whether you are checking our spellings or grammar also in that SST or science definitely they will explain or they will say no 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 we don't check that we check matter only this is correct but if there are so many spellings or grammatical mistakes 
the bad impression will naturally deduct your mark. They won't say that they have, they have uh, reduced or deduct your, deducted your mark only because of those such type of mistakes. But yes, the fact is that you are likely to lose some marks for that. Now maths, there are four sections. For one mark, 20 questions will be there. Total 20 marks. B section, two marks, six questions. C section, three marks, eight questions. Total 24. And D section, four marks, six questions. 24. So this is new or revised paper pattern. This is maths weightage, chapter wise weightage. If you observe algebra weightage is maximum one, 20 marks. And next to that geometry, 15 marks. All chapters are important, but focus on each chapter as per the weightage. Naturally for algebra and geometry, as the weightage is of 20 and 15, 35 marks. You will focus more on the more on those two topics. Your textbook covers less number of problems. So my personal suggestion is for extra practice you must uh, you need reference books. For example, S. Chand, R. D. Sharma or Oswal Question Bank for getting full marks or good marks, extra practice is required and that practice, I am expect, for that practice, I am expecting you to use those books. In construction chapter, marking of measurement is necessary. The diagram which you will draw, construction diagram which you will draw measurement marking, measurement mark is required and also write that in words, only drawing, uh, drawing a construction diagram is not sufficient. You must write that in words. Mass normally, my, ex my normal expectation is you must solve mathematics paper section wise and serially section A, section B, section C, D in this way. Many students, they are good in maths and they want to create good impression. That is why the, uh, they start writing with section D. But do not do that. In maths, you cannot keep any chapter for option because even if there is an internal option out of those two, in suppose question number 22, out of two, this or that, you will have to solve one, one sum. But if two questions are from same chapter, then you will have to solve it. And for that purpose, your each you are you must be good in each and every chapter. In mathematics, in construction chapter, only drawing a good figure or correct figure is not sufficient. You must write steps also. In heights and distance application of trigonometry, drawing a figure is compulsory. In probability, writing a statement is compulsory. For example, let A be the event of getting so and so. This statement is important. Only A is equal to and directly writing, uh, directly solving that sum is not good. You may uh, lose some marks for that. In geometry, figure or diagram is must or compulsory for every question. Question may be of one marks, one mark, two marks, three marks, but drawing a figure is compulsory. Normally in mathematics, algebra, geometry, we use for every step, therefore or is equal to sign. Do not forget to give that sign. Between two steps in mathematics, between two steps, there must be a gap of one line. Don't solve any sum or every uh, any sum 
every step in that sum on each line there must be a gap of one line final answer you must write in a box in case of word problems you must write final answer in a statement for example let father's age be x years and son's age be y years then you cannot write your final answer as x equal to 50 years x equal to 50 and y is equal to 20 you cannot write final answer in this way you must write final answer as therefore father's age is 50 years and son's age is 20 years observe those answer sheets which are written by good students see see how they have presented or solved those sums there is a one line gap box for final answer final answer is written in a statement in geometry sums which are based on theorems actually you are writing proof of that theorem or solving sums based on that theorems always use two columns first column is statement and second column is reason because sums based on theorems you are expected to write reason for every step but many students they avoid it if you provide separate column for writing reason then definitely you will write reason in that column against each step so statement and reasons two columns must be there in case of maths all chapters you must write the final answer as given in the text for example in simultaneous equation chapter if suppose your answer is x equal to 5 and y is equal to 3 then you must write the final answer as x equal to 5 and y is equal to 3 is a solution of given simultaneous equations many students they write answer as solution set is equal to and in curly brackets phi comma 3 but answer correct answer given in the text is x equal to phi and y is equal to 3 is a solution of given simultaneous equation means that answer is in a statement not in the solution set form so observe how each type of sums answer is given in the text and start writing in that way only in case of mathematics you can use any method because suppose your school teacher has solved any particular sum in one by using one method in textbook there may be another method in reference book or digest which you are using there may be another method your tuition teacher may have solved that sum in by, by using different method and some good students they they are using their own method then which method is correct one board is not specifying any method board expectation is your final answer must be correct and for getting that final answer sufficient or necessary steps you, you must have written this is the simple requirement of board so marks are not allotted or given for any specific method you can use any method now science and social studies though those two subjects i am covering simultaneously in those two subjects science and sst these are the types of questions which can be asked this is science paper pattern section a 20 marks objective or short answer questions are there mcqs are also there section b and c both are for 30 30 marks but section b will cover three marks questions and section c will cover five marks question so in short in your papers only one three and five marks questions will be asked in science in social studies sst 
20 marks objective questions are there. Then section B, 8 questions, 3 marks each question. So, total 24 marks and section C, 6 questions for 30 marks and in addition to that separate map question for 6 marks will be there. So, total is 80 marks. For 3 marks question, you must write minimum 6 to 8 points and the length of the answer in between 10 to 15 lines. We know that our answer sheet is of 16 lines, but I am expecting you to write minimum 10 to 15 lines for 3 marks question. Diagram is there for that specific answer. If diagram or maybe map is there in your uh, text. Then in addition to full explanation or writing full points, I am expecting you to draw that diagram or map also. Underlining is compulsory for all subjects for all types of questions because we know that examiner will not read each and every word. Long answer questions for 5 marks, minimum 8 to 10 points and the length will be minimum one page. It may be one and a half page also, but minimum one page answer you must write. But in case of long answer question means five marks question, you must write separate introduction and conclusion. In addition to that drawing a map or diagram as required considering the nature of that question, you must draw it. Underlining is very important and selection of question means if there are two options out of two you will have to solve one question and you are comfortable or good with both questions then which question you, sh you should select. My suggestion is if there is a map or diagram related to that question then you select that specific question. Normally students they are reluctant to draw diagram or map and they are comfortable with writing more words or more lines or more lengthy answer. But for getting good marks or full marks, if you select the question which covers diagram or map, then you are likely to get good marks or full marks. In case of physics, draw proper ray diagram arrow and measurement are compulsory. Learn valency chart properly, IUPAC nomenclature, more practice is required. Periodic table, groups and periods which, which are mentioned, you must learn, learn them by heart. Biology, genetic ratios, learn them by heart. Terms which are used in genetics, you must, you try to understand it properly because you will have to mention those terms in your question paper as described or explained in your text. For biology, H. Chang book is good for more practice. All laws of genetics and definitions must be as per text, but this is a general statement. In case of SST and uh, science, you keep it in mind that wherever you will have to write definitions, rules, laws, principles or any specific statement, then it must be strictly or ditto as per the text. You cannot use your words in between that definition. Ecosystem, proper understanding of problems is must, do not get confused. All these are common problems faced by students. Now just observe how to write those answers.
in case of distinguish between normally we write that answer by using two columns but i am suggesting you to draw three columns first column is point of difference in that column you will just write point only so exam examiner at a glance he will come to know which point you have covered give reasons write in points for writing a point number draw separate column and give point number as 1 2 3 4 only not a b c d e just i explain that uh, in case of definition or explain the concept strictly as per text but you must write example also only definition writing definition is not sufficient map filling in map filling accuracy must be there proper labeling using proper signs and symbols don't use any colors only shading is allowed and solve all questions fill the map in this way in case of science problems or numericals when you when you will solve any numerical you must prepare or draw two separate columns in first column only those words will be there given to find formula solution and final answer in this way you will solve it balancing chemical equations or reactions properly draw arrows and solve it in this way only balancing reaction is not sufficient you must give proper explanation and reaction which is balanced you must draw proper box means that chemical reaction which is balanced you write it in the box only science diagram strictly as per the text and i am suggesting you to draw a 12 cm box one box will be there and under that box you will draw proper diagram as far as possible labeling should be on one side but it is not a rule if some labeling is uh, on other side there is no problem dark proper dark pencil you must use see proper box is there and under that box figure is drawn i am sure that the explanation which i have given to you is sufficient you will write your all all means three sub three subjects papers i have not covered languages maths science and sst you will write those three subjects paper as per the board examiners and moderators expectations and what they expect just i have explained you i am sure that definitely you will change your paper writing method as per my instructions and you will get good marks wishing you wishing you all the good luck thank you